Hello! It's been several months since I've made a video, and since March is MS, Multiple Sclerosis Awareness Month, I'm going to kind of try to pick it back up a bit to help spread awareness and information and just keep you guys informed. Now, I want to just address the fact that the original videos, that two I have posted, um, were first made because I sort of told friends and family publicly on Facebook that I had been diagnosed with MS and kind of just cut it off there. And I had a lot of questions from people about how I was diagnosed, what were my symptoms. People were worried that they had similar symptoms and it was getting kind of exhausting, like reliving the story over and over. So I decided to make a video and share it with them. And I made it public because they wanted to share it with their friends. And before you knew it, had like 3,000 views and people wanted, um, a, a few people wanted me to make it easier to share. So I just plopped them on YouTube. And um, so I'm just going to use this as my forum. Um, mostly I think it'll be my friends and family, but I have found people from all over are, these are, it's helping them. And that's been great because I know when I was kind of going through this process, um, I watched videos like just like my original diagnosis video just kind of I don't know what it was like you just want to kind of hear do not that you're trying to diagnose yourself but you kind of want to know is this or do my symptoms line up with these people is this what I what's headed for me and how are they doing now and what's working for them so that's kind of why my videos are here but in that I never really introduced myself because these were originally for people who knew me um, so I'll just make this super brief I am Cassie. I live in Montana with my four children and my husband, two dogs, two cats, and two parakeets. So it's like a mini farm in suburbia. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, I obviously have looked back at my videos and there were still some holes in the story, even though it's a really long video and I'm really happy that some people have taken the time to watch it all. Um, but there's like this big gap. When I mentioned um, my kids were sick in January and then I ended up getting sick, I kind of didn't really explain why I even told you that. I feel like that's useless information. <laughs> um, the reason why I said that is that likely was the precipice, the trigger for my major relapse. And um, the, it's one, one of the top causes for um, serious MS relapses or upper respiratory infections. And so the reason why I had mentioned that they were really sick and I was really sick and on the tail end of getting sick is when um, my hands went numb is that likely was what kind of caused that. So um, that's just to fill in that hole, <laughs> that gap in the story. And when I was sick, I didn't really have a sore throat, but I distinctly remember sitting here at the dinner table and I was chewing my food <laughs> I think it was chicken. It's about to s swallow it, and it's it wasn't like my throat was sore. I couldn't swallow it. It's like literally my I forgot how to swallow. I know that sounds loony and and not possible, but many of you watching who have MS may also experience this. And this is right like a few days before my hands went numb, and I kind of just had to sit there, and everyone's talking, and I'm thinking. I don't, I don't remember how to swallow. Like I can't, like I can't, my brain is like, what do you do now? And so I took a drink of water and I finally, you know, obviously was able to swallow. But I said, I am having trouble swallowing. I thought, um, oh, one of my kids at the time, one of them tested positive for strep. So I thought, oh gosh, I'm getting strep. Like something's going on in my throat. And that probably wasn't the case because it continued and it still happens. Like I pretty much kind of, I avoid meat for other reasons now. That's kind of, you know, if we want to talk about diet changes and um, lifestyle changes, I do eat meat, but I have cut it way back partially because I have trouble swallowing it. Um, also because it's uh, better for anti-inflammatory. Anyway, uh, other things, obviously like a dry, dry, it's just difficult to swallow. It's kind of scary because I think, oh gosh, if that gets worse, well, when I love to eat, 
but two, just the the loss of function in that area is kind of alarming because you know breathing and all that. It's very important, <laughs> which I think is kind of uncommon. It does ha it can happen with MS to have your breathing affected, but um, which is why I think a lot of patients, not a lot, some patients are prone to the respiratory infections or can have complications um, with MS with pneumonia because it, you kind of lose some of that function. I ramble a lot. I'm really sorry. <laughs> okay. That's why I brought up being sick, swallowing issues. I have notes because I just will stare into the camera and forget what I'm talking about. The other, another, um, this is just an interesting fact. And I really wanted to talk about this and actually my sister said, you forgot to bring that up. I said, You're right. Um, my doctors had told me that I likely had been treating my MS for years with pregnancy and slash nursing uh, because they have found pregnancy puts MS into remission. Having four kids and they're kind of spread out evenly about two to three years. Um, you know, you have a baby, you're nursing the baby, then get ready for the next baby. And doing that kind of quieted down, I think, my disease process to the point where some of my symptoms were mild, easily ignored, um, until I had my fourth baby, probably because I'm getting older. And it was after I had her that things really kind of kicked up a notch. And but the good part about that is many women with MS can come off their medications safely if they can get pregnant within a certain time frame and have um, safe, healthy pregnancies because the immune system, anyone who's been pregnant usually is aware, your immune system kind of drops down a little bit and that's to protect the fetus, the baby. Um, so your body doesn't kind of attack it. It's something foreign in the body. It's a little bit ironic because you don't want to get really sick when you're pregnant either, but that sort of dip in the immune system also has, you know, benefited people with an immune disorders, autoimmune disorders with a mess. So it just kind of quiets it down. They have a lovely pregnancy. They usually feel better than they ever have. I didn't really totally feel my best being pregnant, <laughs> but um, I obviously wasn't having MS symptoms. But one of the, like, the, I actually think statistically it's the number one cause of relapses is post-pregnancy, specifically six months post-pregnancy. Uh, there's a huge um, number of women who have relapses. So your physician will then really be watching you or your neurologist or um, if you haven't been diagnosed and you think you might have MS and you're going to have a baby, be careful around six months post and um, track your symptoms. Uh, and then I think I'll add this into this little video. just want to kind of talk a little bit about how I told my kids, how we told our kids and or how they handled it and um, without it getting too personal for them. Uh, my littlest, Portia, she obviously is kind of like, whatever, she doesn't really understand. She knows she MS and because we talk about it all the time. So she's like, oh, do you have MS? Is your brain sick? And I'm like, yeah, she's kind of right. Um, she went through a lot of it with me, a lot of napping, a lot of doctor's appointments with the, the long relapse that I had last year. She went through a lot of it with me. Um, but she clearly is pretty much clueless. <laughs> Gianna cracks me up because my she is in first grade. She, I have explained it to her, but she's still fairly young, but she's also very smart. And she just kind of, I think, forgets about it sometimes. And she'll see me like taking my medicine and say, oh, you still have MS? <laughs> yeah, gee, there's no cure. Unless some smart girl like you, because she wants to be a scientist, finds a cure. We need a cure. So that's kind of her goal is to, well, she wants to cure cancer and cure MS. So good job, G. Get on it. Um, and then Angie, my oldest daughter, she was 12. She's now 13 at the time. And so she really kind of understood all along. I mean, when, when things, she understood through the whole process that um, there was more in my opinion, there was more serious things on the table. So when those sort of terminal 
things were off the table, she was relieved along with me. We both felt a lot of gratitude that, um, that it was a mess. And that sounds weird. I mean, a lot of people ask me, gosh, you must have been just such shock. Like you must have been like, this was just out of left field. And, but it really wasn't. I was so grateful <laughs> that I wasn't needing like brain surgery or had a brain tumor. And I know not everyone has a reaction. And I, I kind of felt prepared for it in this weird way. I have met a few people in my life with MS, um, my old landlord, one of my old co-workers, boss, um, and they both had totally different disease progressions. And I always just left my kind of conversations or interactions with them feeling really grateful for my body and my health and what it can do always kind of with this inclination that it might, that might not always be the case for me. I know it sounds kind of like doom and gloom, but like, I, it's like, I kind of, it's so weird intuition. I kind of always knew, I always felt like I needed to do everything. I wanted to go to every concert and game or practice and do everything I could with my kids because I might, I really felt like I might not be able to do that always. So I want to do everything now. Or I want to live my best life now, which we all should. I mean, regardless of if you have MS or if you have any sort of disease or a struggle in life, we all should be living our best life. But I mean, I even wrote, I remember I'm really rambling. So I was talking about my kids. <laughs> anyway, um, I remember at work around Thanksgiving, two Thanksgivings ago, they posted kind of a, what are you thankful for? And you wrote on these little circles and posted what you were thankful for. And I didn't just write my health, even though that's really what I'm grateful for. I wrote my able body because it's just never was lost on me that, you know, we pick ourselves apart. We, well, you know, we're not, I want, I want longer hair. I want straighter hair, curlier hair. I want to be thinner. I want to be all these things that we're not, that we want to be. But really, I was just so grateful that my body works. And now here I am. <laughs> and so I really wasn't very surprised. It was kind of like, you know, great here. It's crapping out on me. Um, I just knew it was going to happen. Back to my daughter. So she was just really grateful that I wasn't dealing with something more serious. And she, her, she literally just said, Oh, so you're not dying. I said, no, not that I know of. And she said, that's fine. I'll, I don't mind. I'll push you around in your wheelchair if you need it, which is really cute. I thought, Oh, that's so sweet. And at the same time, I was like, I hope that doesn't, I hope we don't have to do that. And then my son, so my son, I skipped him on, on purpose. <laughs> he's, he's the second oldest because he struggled with it the most. And he still at times, does like I, I think I spend the most time sort of going back over it with him, like what this means. Um, you know, I t sat them down and told them all about it, and he was kind of, you know, seemed fine. And then I just sort of got the feeling over the next few weeks that he really didn't understand it or he had questions. So I took him out on like a little mommy son date, and I really just laid it out there, I didn't sugarcoat it, and I just said, you know, like explain again what MS is. And kind of the best case scenario, worst case scenario, and, and the fact that it's completely unpredictable. Like there's no way for us to know what's going to happen. And then um, I just kind of let him go through those emotions. And and it wasn't that he was upset that I might end up in a wheelchair. Like not out of like an embarrassment level. It was he was upset because he just felt like it wasn't fair, right? I mean, rightfully so. He, you know, kind of that whole you can't show up in a wheelchair. He said, maybe when you're old, like a grandma, but not when you're young, like now that you can't, no, not you. Uh-uh. Not going to happen. <laughs> and he just kind of like stared out the window and we're driving around and just let it be quiet and kept telling him like, well, that's might be what happened. It might not happen. I sure hope it doesn't happen, but it, it might happen. So we need to be ready for that. Then I explained to him that there's a difference between <laughs> a relapse that can cause kind of those temporary um, walking issues. You know, I might have a relapse and need a cane and then come out of that okay and be walking, or I might not. And so it, that's kind of hard for him to understand. During this um, little mother-son date, 
uh, we stopped at several stores and we had stopped at Walmart. And this woman, I mean, what are the chances, was out there selling her cookies and candies and all these pretty things she made for her MS walk she was doing for her multiple sclerosis um, event. And I just, it was just like, chances. I took the cutest pictures. And if I ever decide to become some fancy YouTuber, which I won't, I could learn how to insert little pictures. I probably will never do that. <laughs> um, and he, if anybody, local family friends on here know, Rocco doesn't, he doesn't, he likes to save money. He doesn't like to spend his money, but he spent his money. He donated money to her walk and he bought me some candies and cookies and we took some really cute pictures and but then he picked up the pamphlet for MS and it had everybody on the front was in a wheelchair. And he's like, mom, look at these people. Like you said, it doesn't always happen. I'm like, well, you know, it doesn't always happen. But <laughs> anyway, I told him, it's fine, Rocco. They're just trying to, you know, spread awareness. Walk in the door and there's those electronic wheelchairs. And we got a good laugh because I said, hey, at least we could go for a ride. You could ride with me. I hear some screaming. It's my littles over there. They're trying to be quiet. They're trying really hard. They're probably not going to be very quiet. <laughs> um, anyway, I said, you know, hey, look at the bright side. You can come ride on these scooters with me. And he's like, you're right, Mom. That'd be fun. Anyway, so I think that's kind of, they, they've all kind of settled into it a little bit. The little girls, eh, Rocco, he still, I think, has the most serious question. He's kind of protective over me. I mean, he's he's my boy. So he, he's very, he's hopeful, as am I. My oldest, Angie, she's really kind of taken to the um, spreading awareness. She wants all these shirts and jewelry, and she's done reports on it. She's spoken in front of her class about it. She wrote a, a health report on it. She's doing in her, um, she's writing a newspaper article and interviewing me about it. She is, she's a lot like me. We like to spread awareness and help people. I don't know if you heard that. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks again for watching. I'm going to upload several videos because March is MS Awareness Month. And um, I think that's it for this one. Thank you so much for your support, everyone, from all over the world, which has been really, really, really fun for me and all the comments. Thanks so much.